What's up guys, we're here with So Ryong. Hello. So, I believe you have three national records at the moment, right? Four. Four, okay. Uh, what are the four? Five, ten, half and full. Yeah, the half as well, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Alright, maybe start off by talking about those PVs. What, what are the exact times? Well, the 5 k is 14.44, uh, running 20, July 2021. 10 k is 31.12, that was last year. The half is 66.46, that was in Houston in 2019. And the marathon is in Valencia. Yeah, nice. 2 hours, 22 minutes and 59 seconds. That was yeah. in December. What would you say is the most impressive PB out of all of them? Well, I think a lot of people including the IWF points table thing is the marathon. Yeah. Personally, I thought the half marathon was more of a perfect race for me. Like, yeah. But yeah, I think both the marathon and the half, I was running quite close to my limit, but I probably have a bit more room to improve in the marathon because um, I ran quite low mileage. So you talked a bit about that, you know, lower mileage. Yeah. Is that like your coach's decision or do you just think that that's worked for you in the past and you talked about it with your coach? I would say that a lot of my easy mileage is planned by myself. The harder sessions are what I do with my coach. So, so especially in Singapore, like I, the coach I work with here is Stephen Quack. So I only meet him like Monday, Thursday. He only plans my Monday, Thursday. Monday is usually a long session. It could be about 15k of volume, let's say 15 times 1k. About 310 to 315, okay, depending on what kind of fitness level I'm at. And then Thursday will be something faster. So let's say seven kilometers at 5k pace. And then followed by let's say six and four hundred meters at 3k pace. Yeah, so cool. yeah, we took on those different paces. Yeah. And what are some of the other you know names of Singapore athletes that are in your squad? Oh well, Melvin, I think you might have met Melvin. Have you feel Melvin? Uh, I filmed in this morning. <laughs> okay, from that. Yeah. There you go. So Melvin, uh, 40 years old, good guy. He joined our training group last year. I was still too, because you know, he's, for, he's 40, but he looks like, he looks quite young, right? Like, yeah, he's fit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's fit. Yeah. He's still quite youthful, brings that energy and ex yet experience to the squad. Love it. We used to have a much bigger squad, but like, a lot of them just graduated university or got jobs, got busy with their jobs or whatever so like one of my favorite people to train with was Aaron who's a teacher but he's just left the group to train with someone else um, I train with a doctor I mean a medical student Chong Chi I train with a teacher Darren so like all different shapes and sizes different walks of life different jobs I'm currently in law school so I probably have more flexibility in my time compared to a lot of these guys yeah but they really helped me get better because you know um it takes turns to take the pace if I, if I feel better i push the pace but otherwise they help me out and yeah so that's that's the group that we have yeah and you um, talked about how you do law right now obviously you do that in the uk right yes i guess do you find it easier to train there because of the weather yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> like Singapore how far we into this room we're like eight minutes you can see sweat is starting to fall on the back of here yeah yeah when the UK you can finish like an hour 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 20 minutes of running the shirt is still quite dry yeah um so that's just the weather challenges that we face yeah in Singapore yeah I'm definitely struggling to adapt to the humidity and heat here well, I, mean, I mean i used to live in thailand but i'm not used to it anymore <laughs> one way to do it is you run without a shirt <laughs> yeah, yeah because most of the time i actually run without a shirt yeah especially for hot sessions because just no point you just yeah. gets drenched right away absolutely no point <laughs> yeah to wear a shirt. yeah i didn't bother wearing a track uh shirt on the track yesterday yeah and obviously you've got um sea games coming up in may yeah it's actually pretty soon about a month away now right yes I actually don't know the answer to this. So, what races have you done in Sea Games so far? I know you've done a couple of marathons, but have you done any other events at Sea Games? So, in 2015, I did a marathon. I won it. 2017, I did a marathon. 
and I had a swan in the 5k because I qualified. I only decided to do the 5k like the day before and I got fifth. So I kind of have experience doing the 5k, but this time I'm doing the 5k, 10k, no marathon. So I'm kind of, kind of doing the whole thing in reverse because mostly people do 5k, 10k to their older, they move to the marathon. I think Melvin was a good example. He did 5k, 10k in 2015 and last year he did a marathon. Yeah. First of me, I'm going the other way where I did a marathon twice and then now I'm going to do 5k, 10k. So that's a. Uh, yeah, well, apart from the reason where you, obviously you haven't done a marathon to qualify for it, like, is there any other reason why you wanted to do the 5 and 10k instead? Well, last year I just took the year off from the marathon pretty much to race 5 and 10k because I wanted to improve on my speed endurance and um, given law school I was running lesser mileage played in nicely but also because I just moved to the UK I wanted to you know kind of figure out what my training was going to be like figure out a routine it's easier to do that focusing on shorter distances but I was planning to do a marathon at the end of the year last year and then I started having a hip problem in my left hip my back was getting really tight and the winter came so everything was got worse and nothing cleared up to like January or February this year it was actually quite recent that I'm training again like full blast without much restrictions so that was why I didn't run a marathon last year but the last time I ran a marathon was Valencia I managed to do a national record there so like still on a good note with the marathon it's not like bombed my last marathon and hated doing it or whatever I'm not still enjoying yeah. it like I reckon you'll come back stronger from it just by working on speed again I think so, I think yeah. so yeah like the same year I did my marathon PB I did my 1500 meter PB yeah wow and what's that because you're obviously more of a longer distance runner but I ran a 401 so yeah wow I was a little bit bummed because I didn't run <laughs> 4 yeah <laughs> but I had to lead most of the race surely that's also on your bucket list though while you can yeah right? yeah and yeah. my time is ticking on that right because I'm going to be 32 in August mm. I don't really feel like I'm aging that much. In fact, sometimes when I do my last set of 400, I can still go pretty quick. Yeah, I saw that 61 second last night. Yeah, last, like, night, last year. In the last rep, you did 400 or something, right? Yeah, it was yeah. the end of a long session. I ran 61. Yeah, nice. So 61 night, so more like 62. Yeah. But this is not stuff that I could do 10 years ago. Like, I'm actually like getting stronger. And with that, I think it comes a bit of speed that you can apply into the 1500. And yeah, so when I ran 401, I think it was quite evenly paced, but the third lap was a bit slow. I ran like 66 second lap. So yeah. that was what took away the stop four minute opportunity. But yeah. it's alright. Next one will go better. Yeah. And I haven't really raced the 1500 since. So. Alright, so finishing games coming up. Um, do you know like who your competitors are so far? I mean, usually I don't know. Like you really got to follow like the other trials of the other countries and I haven't really been doing that because I, I just got selected two weeks ago so I've just yeah. been focusing on my own fitness. But I think I feel like the defending champion from Vietnam will be there, Van Lai. Um, and from Thailand actually it's quite interesting because uh, one of the Bauman boys, Kiran Tuntibate, is a Thai guy. So he could, he could be representing Thailand from what I understand. True, yeah. Has he ever done Sea Games before or no? He did it in 2019. I think he won both the 5 and 10. Yeah, yeah which easy. is not surprising, yeah. Quite, easy, quite easily. He's very quick. Because, I mean, he's, he's, um, world, he's world class, right? He's the best time. He's been in the Olympic finals role once, I think. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. How do you think your training is going? Mm, going as well as I can. Like, this is the end of my second week. I only really have six weeks to get ready, so. Yeah, exactly. Um, but all my workouts have been like bang on. Um, been quite tired from the workout so been jogging easy but my first week was good good mileage um, second week was it's good my mileage is on it's quite low it's about maybe seven, 70 75 miles training for 5 and 10k wait miles or kilometers miles so like kilometers miles. will be about yeah. 100 and first week was 118 this week will be about right same thing yeah in your peak marathon training like what sort of mileage were you doing then so i have run up to 160 kilometers for a marathon this is when i was like preparing for my first two sea games uh, but ironically when I ran my best time in the marathon I only ran like max 130 yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
and like off camera you talked a bit about like the importance of speed and like we talked a bit about my PBs as well and mm -hmm. how I plateaued a little bit but you're recommending you know speed I mean you know, distance running and uh, and the, you need both right you need volume like it's so, so it's, it's so aerobic that you know speed is useless if you don't have the aerobic strength to sustain that that speed and like use it at the end of a race but uh, I think you were talking about how you do a lot of like easy runs and a lot of like free I mean like free free structured tempo runs like nothing like too specific so that's good for like the majority of your general base building phase but I do think that if you want like breakthrough in the 5k you do need to do the painful like <laughs> the painful stuff you know like four times a mile at your 5k pace um, or like even stuff that's faster than that so it's it's very painful like 5k pace is very painful when I'm running a 5k like two three laps in you can already feel like it's gonna be a long day but you know that's that's the 5k that's the nature of that event like it, it is very painful you're always on that red line